From simple shapes and pixels to your very own designs brought to life, today I'll be showing you how to get started with the best beginner guide that opens you up to the world of spriting. But of course, to start creating your very own sprited designs, we need to choose a program on which we will start drawing. My go-to program is a free spriting program called LibreSprite, which is available on PC, but some other great options are Pixel Studio and Graphics too. So, now that we got the program, time to open the program. Now, an important thing before creating your first ever sprite is deciding in what type of style you want to create your sprites. For the sake of the tutorial, I'll be using the 96 by 96 dimensions, which are a Gen 5 style sprite that are most commonly used in fan games. If you want Gen 3 sprites, then use the 64 by 64 dimensions and limit yourself to 16 colors for a more authentic feel of the GBA sprites, while 80 by 80 is for generation 4. Now that we decided on that, let's get started on our sprite. First, obviously come up with a concept or design that you want to start trying to turn into a sprite. For teaching purposes, I'll be making a simple Pikachu clone for simplicity and easier understanding. So, now that we got the idea, let's start putting it on the canvas. The easiest way, at least for me, to start putting something together is by sketching in the same way you would do like on paper, something like this. When getting something that somewhat matches your imagined object, clear up the lines a bit and move on to the next part until you get a rough idea of the main shape of your body or at least an outline that you are satisfied with for now. Don't worry if it doesn't look so great right now, anything can be fixed easily later and the next steps will greatly improve your overall look. Ok, now that we got the main shape of the body down, let's move on to details such as eyes, cheeks, mouth or anything like that. A thing that many beginners struggle with is getting the correct sizes or details down so it doesn't feel off or getting the perspective right. To explain this a bit better, let's use Pikachu's Gen 5 sprite as an example. As you can see, from our point of view we can see that it's looking a bit to our left. But how do we achieve this feeling? Although the head is shaped in a way that the eyes seem they would be in a different spot, we actually put them slanted in a different direction. Like the right eye being a bit to the right from the center of the head. Then the left eye is one or two pixels lower and is usually smushed next to the outline on the left side. We also reduce the width of the eye by one pixel so that we get the feeling of eyes being apart and boom, the results speak for themselves. Now you may be thinking why am I so caught up with the eyes? But the thing here is that this strategy pretty much applies for every single thing in the detailing process. The cheeks, exactly same thing. Making the feet and legs look like it's not standing in a static pose, make the left one smaller and wider to look like a better stance, then also shift the pixels resembling the toes also to the left. But a thing that applies to the fingers is usually reducing the count of fingers since it plays into the feel of just being extended to the side and can be written off as obscured by the hand. Some other noteworthy things for detailing can be stuff like patterns, stripes, accessories and etc. For both of those let's use Exeggutor and Machamp. Like you can see, Exeggutor's lines clearly can be seen going around it but how is this achieved? Well, perspective once again plays a role in this scenario. Start from a high point from your side of choice, then create a tilted curve to the other side. As for accessories like Machamp's belt, we once again use the concept I mentioned before with the cheeks and the eyes. Keep in mind that to create a working perspective like all of these, there will always be less pixels to the side your design will be tilting towards and more on the side that is showcased. Like Machamp's Hard Gold Soul Silver Sprite, tilting more to the left will have its right side exposed around the belt, but the Platinum one will have more pixels on the left when facing more towards the right side. And lastly, for things such as mouths or any other center details, make them in between already made parts like the eyes. Now using the method I mentioned with the belt, let's use a bit of maths here. Between the eyes is a certain amount of pixels, for example, 5. As we see around the hips, the belt has way less on one side than the other. So let's split the pixels into two groups of 2 and 3 
then put a gap of 3 on the right side, but 2 on the left which should result in a nice looking face, so give yourself a pat on the back for that one. Now that we pretty much have made the complete basics of our design, time to bring some color into our fellas life. Although it can seem simple at first, the tone of your design's colors can make or break a sprite. If it's too saturated, then we just get hit with PTSD from seeing blindly oversaturated YouTube thumbnails, but if we make it too grim and desaturated, then we're just making contenders as monster designs for games like Fear and Hunger. But to avoid that, let me tell you how to pick the best colors for your sprite. First, bring up the menu in which you pick your colors, then find the right color you think you would match the design the best, then after doing that, make the color a bit more brighter and or saturated, since you need to also keep in mind the darker tones that you'll use for the shadows in the next section. When you color in the first part of your sprite, zoom out a bit and check if the tone feels right to you. Not too saturated or too colorless. So when you get that done in a way you like, do the same thing for the details as well. But make sure to keep in mind that greatly saturated or somewhat washed out colors still can work like using saturation for vibrant thing like sparkling gems or bright fires, all moody colors can enhance a feeling of ancient and creepier designs. It's just that having a good balance between them is the safest choice, but if you use either of the two correctly, then your design can be made that much better. Shading is a skill that makes any sprite so much better and is easy to understand, but easily can become the thing with the highest skill ceiling when drawing sprites. Let's start with the lightest tones, then move to shadows. The most simplest way you can start figuring out which spots on the sprite you should make brighter is imagining a light source which casts down light on your sprite. To not make things complicated, let's use the most common spot for the light source which is on the top left corner for the design. Let's quickly bring up Pikachu's sprite as an example yet again. We clearly can see that the light is coming down on Pikachu's forehead, then the rest goes down in an appropriate manner. Pikachu's face is brought out forwards the same way as a mouse's, so we know there would be darker tones on the lower side of the head, due to the nose part and fronted extended nature of the head obscuring that part of the body which the same also applies for the tail mostly being hidden from the light by the body and the legs feet mostly don't get light either due to string away further from the source, but the tip of the feet still get light due to them also being extended and closer to the light. I know that all of this just now sounded weird, but that's just how the cookie crumbles. And mentioning the oval bright coloring on the forehead, make that the brightest tone together with other parts that would be reached by the light the most with the same color. Speaking of color, let's quickly go over how to select the right colors for the lighter and darker tones respectively. Now, most commonly there are two ways that you can pick the colors. One. Just pick darker or lighter tones of the already existing color and use those for shading. 2. Move the color slider a bit more to the color that either mixes better with the rest of the design, or the one that's a bit darker to not only make the sprite more colorful, but also make the shading pop out better and not blend together with the rest as easily. As for me, my go-to pick is moving the slider and picking a darker and a bit more saturated tone, then put the shadows on the design based on what we saw with Pikachu. Now, there are also multiple types of tactics you can use to enhance the skill of your shading, so let's go over them. Let's start with the most common one, divert or checkered patterns in the shadows. These are used the most in sprites either to save on the amount of colors used, or to make the spots where the shadows could still somewhat be there, like the right thigh on Pikachu. Not only the shadow would break up there due to how the lighting would work, but it also makes a larger amount of darker spots look less off-putting. Also, be sure to keep in mind the amount of how much you use these patterns relative to the amount of shadow. Up next, transition shading. This and the multi-layered one are less used on limited color palette size sprites, since usually the extra color you would use for this could be used instead for an another design. But if that doesn't bother you or the sprite doesn't use that much colors anyways, feel free to use them. To keep it simple, this type of shading works by having a thin line of a color in between the existing two tones, 
so by looking at it from afar it looks way smoother. And the last one is multi-layered. It works just like it sounds. You make the shadow turn even darker with darker tones in less lighted spots, which most commonly is done by reusing existing or similar darker tones, or taking the outline to repurpose that into extra shading. Speaking of outlines... Of course, just like with shading, the outlines although seeming simple enough, they also play in a part of making your sprite look as good as possible. When looking at the colors used for the outline, there usually are three tiers of colors used. A darker tone specifically made for the use in the outline, a recycled color that is the darkest beside the special outlined one, usually the shadow, and a light tone which is just the lightest tone from the shadow. As for how they are used, let's start with the lightest one. Out of the three, this color is the most sparingly used, by just highlighting the absolute brightest points on the sprite, like the forehead or anything like that. The middle tone is general coverage for lighter parts, then the darkest one is reserved to parts with the most extreme shadows. A thing that you need to keep in mind when coloring the outline is to keep in mind the color mixing. For example, in the darker places instead of putting all of that location's outline as just the dark color, but mix together with dark pixels. Now that we have covered all of the basic main points for creating the sprite, let me tell you some smaller stuff and other things that help you out in the long run. If you are not sure how to approach a certain body part or an aspect of a design, look at the existing Pokemon sprites, some ideas or additions you could use for the sprite. As for me, when I was starting out with learning how to sprite by being self-taught, the easiest and fastest way I started to improve was not only taking notes from the official sprites and how were they made by keeping in mind stuff like perspective and the source of light, but also sometimes looking up something like Venomoth for the huge round eyes or Slowbro's striped belly if I ever get stuck. Although similar, I still count redrawing and revamping sprites as a separate category for learning. Think of this as a digital version of a coloring book for spriting. The way this works is by taking an existing sprite, putting an image of it on the site and redraw it on your own without tracing. Then after you start to understand that you can try doing something like taking a gen 1 sprite of any Pokemon, importing it to your program of choice and then turning it into a newer gen style of your choice by expanding the color palette and using the same spriting methods that apply to gen 3 or 4 sprites. If you have chosen a certain generation or a specific way of how you're going to make the sprite, stick to your original plan. Putting the checkered patterns for the shadow like the Gen 3 sprites, using unlimited amount of colors like for fan games, and picking a different light source that does go well with the rest, can end up messing with how your sprite ends up looking. Stick to the rules and imitate the style of your chosen generation as close as possible. Also, consistency easily can apply to practice as well by not giving up halfway and always giving a shot at trying to improve your art. Ever heard of the saying, practice makes perfect? Don't be afraid to search up on the internet for extra guides and ask around on sites like Reddit for some helpful tips if you are not sure how to improve on what you're making, especially since feedback, although sometimes hard to hear out, can be a really big helper to fix and work on things you may have not thought of before. Now that we have gone over the most important parts of spriting, let's quickly go through the process again, but this time I'll explain every step that I do. Step 1. Roughly sketch out the idea you have in your head until something vaguely resembles what you're looking for. Step 2. Polish and clean up the body so that the outline is clean and doesn't look ragged and rough around the edges. Step 3. Add in the details for the design like mouth, nose, eyes and patterns and whatnot while keeping in mind the method with pixel counting and perspective. Step 4. Find and choose the best fitting colors for your design while keeping them not too saturated or gloomy. Step 5. On the slider move a bit to the darker yet matching tone. Then make the color more of a darker tone. After that, start shading the body based on the light source, which most commonly is the top left. Implement any extra shading methods of your choosing while in this segment, like checkered or transition shading, and in the later patches if you think it's fitting. 
Step 6. Color the outlines to enhance the overall design. Lighter lines near the brightest point, darker tones at the heaviest points of shadows, while also using colors for the pattern outlines. Step 7. Make final adjustments and patch up any noticeable errors, then celebrate with a job well done. And just like that, we have covered the basics of how to get started in the world of Pokemon sprite creation. Now, you may have a rough time and also possibly get overwhelmed when starting, but without trying, you can't know if you'll succeed or not. I hope that even a sliver of info will help from this video, but otherwise than that, thanks for watching, stay tuned for more.